So, yes, ready to sense go. of enterprise. Okay, so the poster, uh, the poster is divided into five sections we call super trends, and the key point to the poster, the reason for the poster, is to describe all the interrelated trends in enterprise IT today. So you'll notice service-oriented architecture, mobile computing, and cloud computing uh, are cross-cutting trends, but we'll talk about each of the five super trends uh, in turn. So in the upper right-hand corner is location independence. This one cuts across all of these topics, where right? cloud computing is inherently location independent. Mobile devices give you location independence as people. Uh, services in the SOA context are also location independent. So those cut across all of these different uh, technology trends. So mobile presence is a key part of the story. Right? It's not just about the fact that your phone lets you be anywhere, but it's more about being available or not available. So essentially the buddy list principle. If you're familiar with base transactionality, the S stands for soft state. That's essentially the buddy list principle. So this is becoming more important. So the lower right-hand quadrant is the global cubicle. This notion of location independence is impacting how organizations uh, deal with their personnel. Right? It doesn't matter where you are physically. You could be in the same location. You could be halfway around the world. And this is all part of the story, as well as Generation Y, the 20-something people who are in their 20s who expect this from their organizations. The Internet of Things is part of the story as well. It's not just physical devices who interact with servers in some data center somewhere, but devices interacting with each other. This is providing enormous forces of change impacting IT organizations around the world as they have to deal in particular with security implications of the Internet of Things. So the lower section is the democratization of technology. These forces are basically uh, breaking down the, uh, the, glass, uh, the glass ceiling of the enterprise IT department. Now, anybody and everybody can have application functionality. It's the App Store model. It's the bring your own device problem. And this is impacting organizations, again, across, across the world. So the big data is part of the story as organizations deal with increasing quantities of data, and that is part of the democratization trend. But what about semantics? Well, we don't see semantics being uh, something that we're really going to be able to achieve much progress in. It always seems to be just one step, uh, one step away. It's a pot of gold under the rainbow. So deep interoperability is the lower left-hand quadrant of the poster, uh, and this is essentially the modem negotiation model for interoperability. Two pieces of software should be able to actively negotiate with each other in order to determine how to interoperate. So interoperability is no longer a static principle, but it's an active principle. So in this, in this uh, super trend as well is the economic mandate. Right? As organizations realize that they can get software that is open standards based, open source, they no longer need to buy software that gives them vendor lock-in. Vendors will stop making that kind of software if customers stop buying it. And that is a very important trend in enterprise IT. Perhaps one of the most cross-cutting trends in enterprise IT is the ongoing cyber war. You might think that there isn't a cyber war going on, but there is, and it has been for years. It is currently being fought everywhere in the world, and it is impacting uh, uh, enterprise IT decision makers uh, and how they spend money across, across the entire globe. Uh, this is part of the complex systems engineering super trend. As organizations uh, try to achieve business agility, they realize business agility is an emergent property of their organizations, and they need to take a new approach to architecting their organizations as complex adaptive systems. And that impacts how we deal with enterprise architecture, centering on how we deal with governance. So governance is now the central activity of the IT management. CIO becomes a chief governance officer, and this changes the way we deal with enterprise IT. Instead of thinking about IT as a set of technology resources in the organization, it's more about governing resources we obtain from any different kind of location. So this, of course, impacts the Agile story, where Agile is less about software development, it's less dogmatic, it's more about building Agile organizations, and it's less about a methodology, and it's more about uh, how we deal with organizational change and more about governance. So you might think that I don't have uh, enough time on this slide to deal with the second box, but actually I do because what I did is I moved to the next slide, It stalled. And I was on such a roll, too, and it stalled. What happened? <laughs> Two slides look the same, but it didn't yeah, do the transition. Yeah, it didn't do the transition. Didn't do the transition. It threw me off. OK. So <laughs> there's a transition there between two slides. OK, so the, the second, 
I don't know. He took out the transition. So the DevOps is also part of this trend, right, as organizations uh, fully automate their operational environment. Agile becomes not just about involving the stakeholder on the development team, but having cross-organizational teams that deal with both stakeholders, development, quality assurance, as well as the operational environment. So it all becomes part of the, the uh, uh, Agile story across the organization. So hopefully it's working now. It's all screwed up now. <laughs> there we are. Okay, is it, is it going now? Okay. So uh, one of the implications of this trend is what I like to call next generation modularization. Right? As uh, we're no longer think about software in big monolithic units, but we're trying to uh, acquire software in more and more modular components that can work together, whether it's on our phones, in our desktops, on our laptops. Uh, and this also impacts how we deal with API management and intermediation, uh, where it's, it's, uh, APIs now become much more fluid and dynamic, and this impacts uh, how we deal with integration. The rise of uh, hypermedia-oriented architecture becomes more of a model uh, instead of service-oriented architecture. Uh, and this impacts how we deal with business process management. Instead of static orchestrations of software that are inherently inflexible, we now have a much more dynamic approach to orchestrating software capabilities in a much more fluid business-centric fashion. So this also impacts uh, how uh, systems can actually correct themselves and deal with, uh, deal with errors. So all of this impacts how we deal with enterprise architecture. Uh, the traditional enterprise architecture frameworks are overly static, in, uh, inherently inflexible. Those are going away and moving toward this notion of next generation enterprise architecture, whose fundamental goal is to drive business agility in the organization. So instead of some fictitious final state, we're focusing on continuous business transformation, which is the center, the target, the bullseye of the poster, because this is where every organization wants to be. It's not a single final state. It is essentially being inherently agile, inherently dealing with change on an ongoing basis. So that is the center of the poster. And now I have 20 seconds to give away the book. So if somebody would bring up the hat, wherever the hat is, hurry. I have 12 seconds left, 11, 10, 9. <laughs> and the winner of that, the winner of the book is, um, oh, some of you didn't want the newsletter, that's fine, you win anyway, uh, Nils Foka. Congratulations. <laughs>